We are Mashab Productions and we've chosen to analyse the sound from the introduction of Submarine. Uh, we'll first start with the ambient sound that we heard. Um, the only ambient sound we actually heard in it was the sound of seagulls from when it starts until 14 seconds in. Uh, we thought the effect of having the first sound of the seagulls kind of set the setting so we knew where it was. It's not very tension building so you feel quite comfortable watching it. So it does kind of set the genre in a way, because although you don't establish that it's kind of a comedy romance, you get that it's going to be quite light-hearted and you feel quite comfortable to watch on. So the next type of sound that we analysed was the actual music. At 27, we have like some guitar strums, which is synchronised with um, the shot, which I think is quite a good um, technique to kind of synchronise your shots with your music, because then... You, it shows all the different kind of sides to Oliver's personality in the film. And then at 26, the actual song begins and the singing starts at, at 50 seconds after all of the, um, like during the montage. And I think the effect of having like the song that's in it, um, it's quite a laid back song and it's kind of talking, the actual lyrics are about one person. And um, yeah, it kind of relates to his situation. And then at 1 minute 50, the orchestral music begins um, and finishes quite soon afterwards. And the orchestral music, kind of what he's talking about, is very far-fetched and very dramatic. And that kind of adds to it and shows how dramatic his thoughts are and how far-fetched he is as a character. Uh, the next type of sound is asynchronous sound. And the asynchronous sound used in this film is the voiceover. The voiceover starts at 15 seconds until 26 seconds. He's just a quick introduction to him, and the, I think it's quite good to introduce himself so quickly because we get an idea of who he is straight away, what kind of film it's going to be. He talks about being an isolated character, kind of get a sense that he's quite lonely, and then all of the sound after that and all the shots after that kind of relate to that to give us an idea of who he is as a character. And then... The voiceover begins again at 1 minute 24 and goes on past the 2 minute mark, which is up to where we analyse. And the voiceover here is talking about something really dramatic about uh, imagining himself in an alternate reality. So I think the effect of having the voiceover there, it's kind of a very necessary thing to have there, because if you didn't have the voiceover there, you wouldn't know what was going on on screen. You might think it was like a kind of fantasy film, which isn't, so that's a good thing to have there just to explain that. And then... Uh, the dialogue we've analysed, that's the last thing we've analysed, and that's the synchronous sound, which means it's synced with what's happening in the film. And at 1 minute 15, a man starts talking and addressing the class, uh, uh, which introduces the character, shows he's in a school, shows he's of school age, so introduces him further about how old he is. And then at 1.35, we have an interruption, which again gives the kind of idea of what kind of people the protagonist has to go to school with, and then at 1 minute 40, the teacher resumes talking until the voiceover begins. So I think the effect of having the voiceover kind of constantly of Oliver shows kind of how consumed he is in his own thoughts and how much he overthinks things as a person. So yeah, I think all of the um, different sounds used and all the different kind of sound devices used all come together to make a really successful result in this film. So yeah.